welcome to fourth and final lecture on lecture series on retaining words i am vaishak c assistant professor civil engineering department engineering college chennai so in this lecture we are going to continue with the design and detailing portion of the problem already discussed in the previous lecture it is important that you see the previous lecture before continuing with this video So in the previous lecture, it was always seen that the initial proportion, which was proposed, was satisfying all the stability conditions, and the dimension was accepted as the final proportion. And also, we have found out what is the active work pressure diagram, what are the different weight components, as well as the what is the net uh, soil pressure distribution at the base of the uh, base slab. So in this part lecture, we'll start with the designing and detailing of each of these elements, toe, heel, and stump. So before continuing with detail designing, it is important for you to note that each of the elements, toe, heel, and stump, is to be designed as a cantilever slab, subjected to varying load. Okay. So here you can see that the toe slab is subjected to a net upward force which means that the toe slab bends upward and it is supported with this common junction. So since the beam bends upward, toe slab bends upward, you can see that the tension side is on the bottom side and hence the reinforcement is given in the bottom face. The, on the other side, the heel slab, the net downward force is more, hence the heel slab bends downward. So you can see that the tension side is on the top side and hence the tension reinforcement is provided on the top in heel slab. When you come to the stem, the load on the stem is actually the active earth pressure diagram. So you can see that the stem slab will deflect to the Lab, which means that the tension side is on the right of the stem. In that case, we provide the tensile reinforcement at the right side of the stem. Now let's start with the design of toe slab. So this design is very basic design of a one-way cantilever slab. So we have to find out the bending moment design bending moment as well as design shear force so first let's find out what is the loading on the toe slab so from this diagram we can interpolate the value at this portion so here it is 142.4 which is q max and you can interpolate what is the value of q at this po position corresponding to the beginning of the toe slab also this toe slab it's made out of concrete and is having a depth of 0.62 meters which means that it exerts a pressure of weight of 15.5 kN per meter square that self weight of is already calculated here so that means that there is an upward and a downward force acting so there is a net upward force of this much acting on the toe slab it is to be noted that the weight of the soil in the toe slab is neglected okay so the this is the load acting on the toe slab it is a uniformly varying load now we have to assume a clear cover of 75 millimeter because it is below soil and usually in structures such as hooting we use a minimum cover of 75 millimeters okay let's assume that we are going to use 16 mm diameter bars in that case, we can calculate the effective depth, which is total depth minus clear cover minus the half the diameter of the bar. It is 16 by 2. So we get effective depth as 537 millimeters. We have to apply load factor 1.5 while finding calculating the design shear as well as the design moment. One more important thing to be noted here is that the critical section for toe slab in shear is at a distance 
d distance away from the face of the support this is because of the inclined crack which have developed because of the support transverse compression offered by the support from the stem so when the so this stem is offering a compression force transverse compression and the crack propagates in the toe slab in 45 degree angle hence the critical section is taken at d distance away from the face of the support so now with that we'll find what is the value of vu so so vu is actually the area of the this trapezium okay next is we have to find out mu mu is also 1.5 is the fact factor load so load factor and has to be multiplied with the so this trapezium is now divided into two parts a triangle and a rectangle so we find the area of the triangle multiplied by l by distance by 2 and area of the triangle multiplied by the d by 3 2 by 3 d okay so get a value of mu as well once we get the value of design shear we can also find out the nominal shear stress tv which is vu by vd this can be found out in capital side so once we have the value of mu all we need to find out is we have to design for we have to find out ast or area of steel required so we can use the basic formula mu is equal to 0.8 sin f by ast into d minus 0.416 xu substituting the value of xu we can get the final equation for finding out mu is equal to 0.8 sin f by ast into d minus f by into ast divided by fck d so here the only unknown is ast substituting all the values we get a quadratic equation in ast and you can solve for finding ast and then you can find out value of pt as 100 ast by vd alternately you can use also use r value to find out uh, pt required so here we use uh, this method and we find out that pt representative steel required is 0.15 percentage okay and from the percentage of steel required, you can calculate the AST required, which is PT into BD, 1000 into 537. It, it is important to note that wherever B is there, the value will be 1000 because we are designing a slab and hence we are designing it for a 1 meter strip. Okay, so once we have the PT value you can also find out the design shear strength value of the concrete toe seam as proposed by close 40.2.1 and table 19 whenever PT is less than 0 0.15 the toe C value is 0 0.28 here the toe C value 0 0.28 is greater than the toe V value normal shear 0 0.236 this implies that the given reinforcement is adequate in shear so once we got the AST required we can now find out the spacing in the slab as given in this formula so 100 into area 1 bar divided by AST required so we get spacing as 249 millimeter so we have to give a spacing of 240 center to center when we are using 16 5 bars so the toes reinforcement will go like this at the base of the toes slab it is important to note that we should not stop immediately at the support it should be extended for a little length which is called as development length ld so ld is actually 47 times the diameter of the bar which means 752 millimeters since the beam is short we don't talk about any curtailment requirements Next, we will see the design of heel slab. The design of heel slab is very similar to that of the toe slab. The only difference is that in there in the loading part. So here, if you see, 
the total load on the heel side is actually the weight of the slab okay which is made out of concrete so it is at 25 into 0 0.62 because 25 is the unit weight of the concrete and along with that we have the overburden pressure from the soil which is having a height of around 7.75 minus 0 0.62 and its unit weight is 16 unit weight of soil so the total downward force acting is 12.9 kN per meter square uniform from starting to the end and there is a net upward reaction upward so soil pressure acting this is q minimum value and this can be interpolated and find out here and once we have a downward force and upward force we can find out the net force and we got the net force to be a downward uniformly varying load okay another thing important thing to note here is that in this case the critical shear phase section lies on the face of the support itself because there is no underlying member to give a transverse compression force so the cracking occurs at the face of the support only so in that case we can find out the vu and mu value as we did it in the previous example okay the clear cover is also going to be the same and the d is also going to be the same once we have the vu value we can find out tau v value normal shear stress we can keep it aside once we have the mu value you can find out the a pt and then once you have pt value you can find out the tau c value as well as the ast required so compare the tau c value with the tau v value here also it is seen that the shear the enforcement provided is adequate in shear so once we have the ast you can find out the spacing of bars using 16 m5 bars as assumed so spacing is going to be 187 millimeter is the calculated value so we provide 180 millimeter center to center the important thing to note here is that the tension phase is on the top side hence we give the reinforcement in the top phase also it should not finish at exactly at the face of the support it should be continuous little longer because of the requirement of development length ld so ld is actually 47 times the dimension of the bar used okay so this is very similar to the previous one next we will see a vertical design of vertical step so here we have to first calculate the height of the vertical stem which is obvious it is 5.25 minus 0.62 where 0.62 was the thickness of the base slab okay now in this case of stem it is above the soil hence we can reduce the clear cover to 50 millimeters and we assume that we use 25 bars 20 mm diameter bars so calculate the diameter effective depth at the base total depth 650 minus 50 clear cover minus d by 2 diameter of the bar by 2 is 20 by 2 so we get effective depth as 590 here also the load factor used for both the moments and shear is going to be 1.5 which is according to lsm okay now what is the load on stem is nothing but the active weight pressure so at the top we have this value is nothing but ca into ws and at the bottom it is nothing but ca into ws plus ca into gamma into h where h is the height of the stem so here also we have a trapezoidal loading so we can find out calculate the value of mu at the base section okay by dividing the loading into two parts triangle and a rectangle and here also when we talk about shear the critical section is at a d distance away from the face of the support this is because the toe slab exerts a transverse compression which causes a diagonal cracking on the stem okay so here also the critical section is taken at d distance away from the face of the support so we can calculate the 
um, shear force as the only equation. Okay, once we get the shear force, we can calculate the nominal shear value and compare it with the tau c value. Okay, once we have the m u value, we can calculate AST required and PT required. Once we have the AST required value, we can calculate the spacing. So here we started with the assumption of 20 mm bars. However, we see that the total reinforcement required is very less. So we use, try to use the 16 5 bars only. So when we use 16 5 bars, the spacing is 115 millimeters, which means that we will travel 16 5 bars at 110 center to center distance. So this is actually the vertical reinforcement, which is to be provided on the inner side of the stem okay here also the f15 development length is actually ld which is 47 into 12 but the important thing to note here is that the stem reinforcement will continue all the way into the uh, shear key so the development length criteria will be obviously met Another thing required is actually temperature and shrinkage reinforcement. So important thing to note that note is that the more temperature and shrinkage crack will be happening in the phase which is subjected to the tem temperature changes and weather weathering. So the outer phase is given two by third of the total temperature distribution and inner side is given the one by third of the total temperature distribution. Okay. So this temperature just temperature and shrinkage reinforcements are nothing but these horizontal bars shown here as dotted lengths as dots okay so as per clause 26.5.2.1 the distribution reinforcement to be provided against shrinkage and temperature is minimum reinforcement which is 12 percentage of total area so we have already decided that we are going to provide only two by third on the front facing side and one by third in the back facing side so to on the front facing side we have two by third of 0.12 percentage of total area which is 1500 which means that ASD required on the front face is 520 millimeter bar if we are using 8 m mm bars we get a spacing of 97 which means that we provide a the reinforcement at 100 millimeter spacing at the inner side and in the outer side we provide the reinforcement at 200 millimeter per center to center okay so the these horizontal bars which are denoted as dots are actually the temperature or shrinkage reinforcements okay so whatever spacing is on the left side the double spacing will be there on the right side because here it is two by third and here it is the half of that one by third okay so it is important to note that in stem bar we do curtailment and we do it in two stages okay so we divide the stem into three equal parts and once we divide the it into three equal parts in the bottom most part full reinforcement is given which means that the vertical main flexural bars which were at which were 16 5 bars at 110 center to center when we come to the second portion the space one bar is removed alternate one bar is removed which means that the spacing increases by double okay when we come to the topmost portion here where the bending moment is very less so the requirement of reinforcement is also very less there so there the spacing increases three times because in between we remove two bars okay so spacing increase three times the same thing is done for temperature re reinforcements also here we have a smaller spacing which is 8 mm bars at 200 centimeter then we go to the second middle portion where the temperature reinforcements are at a higher spacing which is 400 millimeters center to center and in the topmost portion 
the temperature reinforcements are given at a spacing of 600 centimeter. The same thing happened on the left side also. Okay, so you can also note that the main reinforcement from the stem continues the whole way into the shear key. Okay, the distribution bar in heel slab and toe slab is nominal bars which shows 10 mm bars at 300 millimeter center to center the distribution bar here is these dots develop denoted the bars denoted by these dots that's it thank you for your patient listening i hope this lecture series was useful for you thank you